The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this distance learning session. My name is Efuba Tanto Evelyn, your geography teacher. Today we are going to be having a geography lesson for opposite. And before we begin with our lesson, we are going to correct the assignment that was given you in the last session. You were asked to find out the factors that are accelerating urbanization in Cameroon. For the correction of the assignment, there are a number of factors that are accelerating urbanization in Cameroon today, uh, and they include the following. High natural population increase, rural exodus, creation of secondary schools and higher institutions of learning, development in transport systems, impact of colonization, and creation of new administrative units. We're going to get into the details of this as we go on with our lesson. <laughs> Our lesson of today is uh, entitled Urbanization in Cameroon. For the lesson overview, we're going to begin with the learning objectives. This will be followed by the previous knowledge, the real life situation, learning activities, exercise, summary, and an assignment at the end of the lesson. For the learning objectives, by the end of the lesson, Learners should, in the first place, describe the spatial distribution of urban centers in Cameroon, and secondly, examine the factors that are accelerating urbanization in Cameroon today. For the previous knowledge, learners already have knowledge on the central business district and the urban sphere of influence. For the real life situation, your village, which has about 7,000 inhabitants, was recently designated as the headquarters of a newly created subdivision. This has led to the building of a hospital, a big market, police and gendarmerie posts, a government high school, and also to the influx of many people from neighboring villages into your village. Question. What is the process taking place in your village, which is now the headquarters of the newly created subdivision? We are going to get in touch with this when we go on with our lesson. So the question will be answered later on. Now we're going to start with urbanization in Cameroon. We cannot go on without knowing what is urbanization. Urbanization is the increase in the proportion of people living in urban areas. It is a process. So it is a process wherein there is a continuous increase in the number of people living in urban areas. This involves two aspects. There is first of all, the movement of people from rural areas to urban areas, and these people are in search of jobs. Some are moving to their first job sites, and others are changing from agricultural to non-agricultural jobs. In the second place, there is a change of lifestyles because the lifestyle in the rural area is different from that in the urban area. So people want to change their lifestyles and they can move for that reason. Now there's, a, there's no universal figure for what is 
an urban area. In Cameroon, if more than 5,000 people are living together, that area constitutes an urban area. In Greece, it's about 10,000. In the US, it's about 2,500. So there is no universal figure for what, uh, for the number of people who could be referred to as urbanites or people living in an urban area. Firstly, we're going to look at the distribution and ranking of urban centers in Cameroon. The first thing we have to note is that the distribution is uneven. In other words, urban centers are concentrated in some areas more than in others, as we're going to see in our study. In the first place, we're going to look at the regions with high urban concentration. First, we have the coastal lowlands with Douala as the main city here. Douala has about 2.5 million people or more. In this area, we also have urban areas that have below 400,000 inhabitants. Beginning from Edea, we have Kribi on the east of the Mongo. On the west of the Mongo, we have Limbe, Tiko, Boya, Mutengene. Those and Kumba, those are towns on the other side of the Mongo. So this area is an area of high urban concentration. The next area of high urban concentration is the western part of the southern low plateau that has Yaoundé as its main town. Yaoundé has about 2 million people and the other towns in the area are Bafia, have Balmayo, there is San Melima, there is Ebunuwa, and there is Obala. The next area of high urban uh, centers is the northern lowlands, where there is Garwa and Marwa having about uh, 4,000 inhabit 4, uh, 400,000 inhabitants or more. Other towns in this area are Kaile, there is Yagua, there is Mora, there is Gide, there is Mokolo. So there are many other towns in this area. Now, these areas that we have just looked at are areas of a high concentration of urban areas. Secondly, we are going to look at areas of low urban concentration. The first one is the southeast of the South Cameroon Low Plateau, where the towns here have less than 100,000 inhabitants, inhabitants. The towns here include Betwa, there is Paturi, there is Belabo, there is Abomba, we also have Yokaduma and Mulundu to the far southeast part of Cameroon. The second area with a few urban centers is the Adamawa Plateau, where Gaundere is the main town, having about 300,000 people. The other towns in the area are Meiganga, Gaundal, there is Tinyere, there is Tibati and Banyo. These towns have less than 100,000 inhabitants. There is also <clears throat> the area at the shores of Lake Chad. Here we have about three towns. There is Fotokol, there is Makari, and Kuseri. These towns have each less than 100,000 inhabitants. In the Indian and the Mafe basins, we have three main towns. There is Mafe, there is Mundemba, and Ekondi City. All of these towns have less than 100,000 people each. Now in Cameroon, there is also the phenomenon that there is a dual primacy. In other words, there are two primate cities in Cameroon, and that is Douala and Yaoundé. These are towns that have <coughs> very large populations, and others have populations that are far lower than the populations that are settled in this area. In the northwest, we can observe an urban line that goes from Bamenda through Ndob to Kumbu, Nkambe, Wum, Mbewi, and back to Bameda. So in settlement geography, this is known as an urban line because we have a line of urban centers in the area. 
Now we're going to look at the distribution of towns according to geographical regions. First, we have the towns of the Southern Forest region. These towns are widely spaced out. We have, as we said, Yaoundé is the main town here. And Yaoundé is at the heart of a cocoa producing area. Another activity that is very prominent here that has led to the growth <coughs> of the urban areas here is lumbering. These other towns in the forest region, as we have, we've named them, we have the western part of the southern low plateau, we have the town of Bafia, there is Obala, there is San Melima, Ebolowa, then we have, as you go towards the east, Abomba, Akononiga, Nanga Iboko, Betwa, Baturi, Yokaduma, Mulundu, all of these towns are towns that are uh, uh, that have populations or inhabitants of less than 100,000, except for Yaoundé, which has about 2 million inhabitants. Now we move on to the towns of the Western Highlands. In the Western Highlands, there is a concentration of urban centers beginning from the Bamenda Highlands with the town of Bamenda, there is the town of Begui, Wum, Dop, Kumbu, uh, Nkambe, and we can come up to Bamenda and cross over to the West region, which is the Bamilike area. We have the town of Bafusam. Bamenda and Bafusam are the main towns here with populations of over 400,000. The others have populations of less than 100,000. In the West region, we have Fumban, there is Chang, there is Bajun, there is Baham, and other smaller towns in the area. The peculiarity about this area is that the people are grasslanders. They have almost the same culture, and they live in the grass fields. In this area, there is a rapid population growth. Reason why this area is one of the most densely peopled areas in the country. Next, we have the towns of the coastal lowlands. The main town here, or the main the city here is Douala. To the east of the Mongo, we have Kribi and Edea. To the west of the Mongo, you have Kumba, Limbe, Muyuka, Boya, Siko, and other smaller towns in the area. The towns west of the Mongo depend on the plantation economy. Here you have CDC plantations of oil palms, of rubber, of tea, and bananas. Those at the Nigerian border, you have Mafe and Bondemba and even Ekondo City, they are towards the Nigerian borders in the southwest region. The towns of northern Cameroon are more spread out on the landscape. Colonial towns here, the pre-colonial towns, you have Kuseri, there is Ngaundere, and there is Marwa. These are pre-colonial towns here. And colonial towns are many. You have the town of Garwa, and one thing we should note about this area is that there is Garwa and Marwa that have populations of more than 400,000 people. All the others are spread out on the landscape. Garwa itself owes its growth to some industries here. There is uh, the cotton industry and other smaller industries around. We have uh, limestone that is mined at Figul in its vicinity, which is used in making cement. We also have food processing industries here in the, uh, the soft drinks which are produced in Garwa. Marwa is the most densely populated area in the region. Garwa comes after Marwa. And this area also have some industries, especially the uh, height and skin, where there is 
leather tanning in the area. And we also have maybe some food processing industries in the area. There is Gaudere, which is a railway terminus having about 300,000 people and it boasts trade and tourism in the area. Trade with Chad, trade with uh, sometimes Central African Republic and there's a lot of tourism that goes on in this area. Other towns in this northern part of Cameroon we had named them. There is Kaile, there is Yagua, Bokolo, there is Makari, Kolofata, right to the ex uh, extreme uh, north. Or to the far north, you have Mora, you have Tibati, Tinyere, Gaunda, Meganga. These are other towns that are found in this region. Now we're going to proceed to rank the towns of Cameroon. Towns around, the towns of Cameroon are ranked in three others and we can go down to the lowest order. But we're going to look at three others. We have the first other towns. Concerning the ranking of towns in Cameroon, as we already mentioned, there is the fact that there is a dual primacy in Cameroon, where we have two big towns at the top of the hierarchy, Yaoundé and Douala. Douala is the biggest and Yaoundé follows suit. These two, they have, we can say, they have the largest populations, they have the greatest part of Cameroon's wealth. Douala has a lot of industries that are concentrated there. They have the finest goods and so many people are found here. So these two big towns are at the top of the hierarchy and others come uh, below them. These two make up about 15% of the total population, and that is the total population of Cameroon, and 45% of the total urban population. Second other towns are those ones that have populations between 250,000 and 500,000. There is a wide gap between the primate cities of Douala and Yaoundé and the second other towns. These second other towns are just about four in number. In number, there is Bameda, there is Bafusam, there is Garwa and Marwa. These towns have populations of more than 400,000. The third other towns are those ones that have inhabitants below 200,000. There are many of them. There is Gaudere, Kumba, Konsamba, Edea, Kribi, as, as uh, we named them at the beginning, uh, Kombo, and many others. Now we're going to look at the primate cities in Cameroon. We look first at Douala and the functions that it performs. Douala is located at the estuary of the River Wuri on both sides of the River Wuri. On the western side, there is Bonaberry, and on the eastern side, there is the town of Douala itself. Which are those functions that are performed in Douala that have attracted so many people and that has led to the growth of Douala over the years? First, there is the industrial function. Douala houses more than 90% of the industries found in Cameroon. They are mostly food processing industries and a few chemical industries like uh, soap factories. Douala is also a commercial and a financial center. This is because what is produced in the industries must be commercialized. So the large population in Douala and the rest of Cameroon has helped Douala to be a big commercial center. There are financial institutions like banks, there are insurance companies that can help to promote industry and commerce in the city of Douala. Douala also performs administrative functions because it is the headquarters of the littoral region, the town of Douala, and 
we have other administrative regions or administrative units that are within the town of Douala. You have Douala 1, Douala 2, Douala 3, and the rest. All of these, they have sub jails that are residents there and that are responsible for administration in the town of Douala. There are also consulates in Douala. There are some countries that do not have uh, um, uh, embassies in Cameroon, but they have consulates in Douala. There are others that have embassies in Cameroon and they still have consulates in Douala. So it serves for administrative uh, purposes. Douala is also an educational center and this can be, uh, we have many schools in Douala. There is first of all the University of Douala that has many faculties. We have other higher institutions of learning that are uh, private uh, institutions. There are so many secondary schools in the area, government bilingual high school, Deido, government bilingual high school, Bonaberry, uh, Lise Joss, Afres Hakel, and many other schools. So Douala is actually an educational center, and so it performs educational functions. There is also the transport functions. Many roads converge in Douala, roads coming from the southwest region, from the northwest and from the west regions. We have roads that are coming from the center, and all of these roads converge in Douala. There is also the railway line that goes from Douala, the Transcam one, from Douala to Yaoundé, and then continue on to Gaoundé, which is the Transcam two. There is also the seaport in Douala and the international airport in Douala. So it performs transport functions. Douala also performs cultural functions. There are churches in Douala. This is evidenced by churches. Mosque, there are many mosques in Douala, the, the, the churches of the Muslims. And uh, this shows that Douala performs a cultural function. There are also entertainment spots, like the Japoma Stadium that was just constructed, and the other Omni Sports Stadium, and many other stadiums in the, in the town of Douala. There are also cinema halls and other entertainment grounds that makes Douala a cultural center and performing cultural functions. Here we have the map of Douala as a town. Unfortunately, we cannot see the, the various quarters very well, but what we should note about this is that Douala is located on both sides of the Wuri estuary. Douala on the other side and Bonaberry on the west side. We we'll also look at Yaoundé and its functions. Yaoundé performs functions, and these functions also have a relationship with the hinterland. Yaoundé is referred to as a land, a town of the seven hills, because it is actually located on seven hills, or situated on seven hills, on the western part of the southern low plateau. Yaoundé performs functions. The first one is administrative. It is the political capital of Cameroon. So there is a lot of administrative work going on in Yaoundé, administrative functions. Yaoundé town itself is the, the, the capital of Ufundi division in the central region. And in Yaoundé, we also have uh, subdivisions, Yaoundé 1, Yaoundé 2, right up to Yaoundé 7. So it performs administrative functions. It is also the seat of many embassies that have relations with Cameroon and consulates that have relations with Cameroon. Yaoundé is also an educational center, so it performs educational functions. It has two state universities, that is Yaoundé 1 and Yaoundé 2, SWA. In addition to this, there are many, many higher institutions of learning which are privately owned and state-owned, like Polytechnic, affiliated to Yaoundé 1, the National School of Public Works, National School of Post and Telecommunications, and many, many secondary and primary schools. So Yaoundé actually performs an educational function. It's also a commercial center. There are many areas where 
trade is carried on in Yaoundé. We have, first of all, the central business district, where we have so many uh, uh, large variety goods and specialist goods stores. We have commercial activities taking place along the major roads, major road arteries in town at road intersection points. So Yaoundé actually performs co commercial functions. We can, we not also forget to mention the various markets that are found in the town of Yaoundé, which are commercial points, like the Bokolo market, we have the Mendong market, there is Melen Vongbiti market, Vongbi market, and many other places. So there is commerce going on in the town of Yaoundé. Yaoundé also serves as an industrial center. There are many industries in Yaoundé, uh, like the soap uh, factories, we have perfect sal. There are woodworks, especially uh, in Yaoundé. Then we have uh, bakeries in the town of Yaoundé, tailoring workshops, newspaper printing presses. These are light industries that are found in the town of Yaoundé. We have breweries like the Brasserie du Cap Rome, which is found right in the heart of the town of Yaoundé. Yaoundé also serves as a transport, uh, it also serves a transport function. We have many roads that converge in the town of Yaoundé, coming from the east region, coming from the north, coming from the northwest and west regions, coming from the littoral, that, and from the south region. They all converge in the town of Yaoundé. And also to mention the fact that the Transcam 1 ends in Yaoundé, the railway line, and the Transcam 2 begins from Yaoundé to Gaoundéry. In addition to this, we have the international airport at Simalen and the, 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 the military base where military planes land. That is also uh, a, a transport a facility that is found in the town of Yaoundé. Yaoundé also serves as a cultural center. We have many churches in Yaoundé. We have the cathedrals, the central cathedral at the center of the town of Yaoundé. We have the basilic, the Catholic church. We have churches, the Baptist church, Presbyterian churches, and uh, uh, Pentecostal churches that are found in Yaoundé. These all are evidences of cultural activities we have entertainment sports, we have the new uh, uh, stadium, or the, the, the new stadium that was built at, uh, at Olembe. We have the Amado Angel Stadium and other smaller stadia within the town of Yaoundé that serve for sporting activities. We can see the town of Yaoundé. We have the town of Yaoundé and its environs. As you see here, we have the town of Balmayo, Nearby, there is Ebolowa Lolodov, we go a bit far away, Obala. These are towns around Yaoundé. There is Ezeka and Minta in the upper Sanaga division, and Nanga Eboko. So these are, although some distance away, but they are found in the vicinity of Yaoundé. Factors accelerating urbanization in Cameroon. First, we have the impact of colonization. When colonialists came, they established assembly points where people had to bring the products from the hinterlands, the raw materials, farm produce, and maybe minerals that they mined to these assembly points. And these assembly points grow up to be towns. Today, they are towns, especially at the coast of Cameroon. We have Limbe, there is Douala, that's where uh, uh, towns at that age, at that point, or during that period, there is also high natural population growth. Normally, this is a developing country, so people give birth to many children for various reasons. This has increased the number of people in the country and has led to many people migrating from rural areas to urban areas. Even within the urban areas, there is also high population growth because those who come in the in-migrants, they always come with the tendency of giving birth to many children. There is rural exodus, which is a very important factor. Many people leave from rural areas to go to urban areas. That is where they settle. There's the creation of schools and higher institutions that have brought many people from inland 
uh, from the hinterland to the various towns in Cameroon. Development in transport systems also serve as a media for people to come to urban areas and people easily move to urban areas. Creation of administ new administrative units and regions have made people to settle in those administrative units leading to urbanization. Which are the problems here associated with urbanization? There is poor and inadequate housing conditions. We all know that in many towns of Cameroon, inadequate urban food supply, many more people and very little food that comes to urban areas, inadequate route infrastructure and traffic congestion in the towns as roads are small, narrow, dilapidated, unemployment and underemployment, many people come and they are unable to get jobs. Some are underemployed, working below their level of training. In this wise, as many people do not have jobs, what do they do? They resolve to crime. So there is high crime wave in most of our urban areas. And people who come in from rural areas find it difficult to adjust to the lifestyle in the towns. We, order, we have others, inadequate social amenities, poor waste disposal, people do not know how to dispose of their waste. There is pollution of all sorts, sociopolitical unrest when people do not have jobs, they resolve to strikes. There is urban sprawl as people are building and going in a disorderly manner to the peripheries to the detriment of the rural areas, irresponsible municipal uh, authorities that do not do their work well. What is the government doing? It's encouraging industrialization so that people can live in those areas. Some industries are planted in those areas, in rural areas, and people stay there. Creation of low-cost housing in towns to house many of these people who come in. There is town planning so that the town should not grow in a disorderly manner. Improvements in agriculture to keep people back in the rural areas. Government tries to manage waste disposal by creating, uh, like Hisakam, companies that can dispose of waste. There's the creation of the Ministry of Urban Affairs that is managing the town and its environs and many others provision of rural social facilities to keep people in rural areas and also rural development projects. Now we have an exercise put true or false against the right statement. Urban areas in Cameroon are more concentrated in the northern lowlands. That is false. For urban hierarchy, Cameroon has a dual primacy. It is true. Yaoundé is referred to as the town of the five hills, no, as the town of the seven hills. Douala is located at the mouth of the river Sanaga, which is wrong, at the mouth of the river Buri. One problem of urban areas is rising crime, wave, and insecurity, which is true. Then there we have the summary of our lesson. For the assignment for the next lesson, classify natural resources into various types. We have the references. The next lesson will be on natural resources. Tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injo biyen